Hey, Luis Brangenberg here with Secret Doorways. Uh, just about to get started on building a single panel recessed outswing door. And I just want to walk you through the, the construction of the basic case. Uh, <clears throat> this is going to be for any of the doors that, uh, that you do. All the cases are basically made the same with, uh, with just a few little variations. So first thing I'm going to do is go to my spreadsheet. By the way, when you order a kit, a hardware kit through the website, uh, you'll get an email back and one of the first things you'll get is an Excel spreadsheet. And in that spreadsheet, you will put the, if you can see that, there we go, the height and the width of the door. So uh, my door is uh, 30 by 80 and that's finished um, dimensions. And whether or not it's going to be a full face frame, I'm going to do full face frames on these. And when you input those, it's going to spit out all the pieces, parts that you got to cut and their dimensions based on those two numbers that you put in. So pretty cool. It makes things easy. And the first thing we're going to do is get started on making the end panels. I'm going to rip the end panels. They're going to be eight inches deep. And I'm going to rip them out of a three quarter inch poplar. These are going to both be... Um, uh, painted so poplar paints or s poplar stains or paints uh, very nicely so I would use uh, I typically will use a, a poplar uh, three-quarter inch poplar I should point out that it's important to wear the appropriate safety protection I uh, eye protection ear protection it's mandatory in our shop Get back to work. Okay, enough said. Next, I'm going to cut my end panels to length. I'm going to put a rabbit on one edge of the end panels to accept the rear panels. They're a half inch thick. have a three-quarter inch dado blade set up in my radial arm saw. I'm going to cut my three dados. Um, this one's going to be for the bottom shelf and I typically like to go so the uh, top of the shelf is three inches from the bottom and at the other end from the top I like to come down so the ceiling of the bookcase is going to be two and a quarter inches from the top and then the uh, center shelf, I like to have it so that it's 40 inches from the, the bottom of the shelf. Um, I should point out the difference between a dado and a rabbit. A rabbit is on the back edge or, or on a edge um, and it receives something like a rear panel. A dado is in the board and it also receives a, another board but this time it's going to be a shelf. So the only real difference is that a uh, rabbit is on the edge, a dado is not. So. This is the time that you got to remember also that you're cutting uh, bookends. So I'm going to cut one. Rabbit's going to be on the back edge when I cut the, the mate to it. Uh, when I cut it, the rabbit will be on the front edge. Okay, I've got my dados in, you can see them at the bottom, and I've got them done in the middle of the, of the end panels, and then again up there at the top. So I should point out a lot of people will put those in. I use a radial arm saw with a dado blade. Uh, you can use a router to put those in. I've even seen people uh, not even bother with the with putting uh, dados in and just go ahead and screw the shelves in place from the outside of the unit. Um, doesn't look as good, but I guess it's okay. I think if I were going to do that, I would want to put a cleat in of some sort to firm everything up. At this point, I'm going to uh, put my holes in for my shelf pins. There's a lot of different ways to put holes in for shelf pins. They make the little uh, acrylic jigs that you can buy at uh, woodworking stores. I've got a 
fancy homemade deal here that I have made up. It's got a little cleat that just sits in that bottom bottom dado, clamp it in place, and then I like to use a plunge router to put my put my holes in for the shelf pins. pocket holes in so that uh, it makes it easier to attach the face frame. So with that the end panels are done and ready to go and we'll start on our shelves and face frame. So you saw me cut the shelves, which is the fixed shelf, the bottom floor, if you will, and the ceiling. Uh, those three fixed pieces, they're three quarter inch plywood uh, to length, and I cut them to width, and I put the pocket screws on the, uh, on the ends, and I also put them here to accept the, the face frame. Um, the reason that I do an eighth inch dado and not deeper is because I can use the standard inch and a quarter pocket screws and not uh, worry about running the screws through the side of the uh, end panel. So we'll go ahead and get these, uh, get the case glued up. Just spreading the glue out here a little bit. Side on. There we go. And then the last trick, once I get that on there, is I put these little feet on. They're, you can just get them cheap at a hardware store. They're just little furniture glides. And I just put those on the on the bottoms. Just uh, they're temporary, just to slide the shelf or, or the uh, bookcase around the shop without uh, scratching up the bottom and dinging it all up. So we'll get that done and we'll move on. This is an extra step that you only have to worry about with a single panel outswing door um, on the non-pivot side of the bookcase, which is going to be this side. You'll need to build up kind of a step and it needs to be another inch off of the, uh, the side of the door. So what I do, so it just take some material, it uh, doesn't matter how you build it up, I'm using two pieces a half inch and I've ripped them to length and I'll glue one here and then I'll take the other one and I'll glue it on top of that so that uh, I have a, a bump out. So the face of the bookcase, which is going to be another three quarters out because you're going to have the uh, face frame on there, um, from the face of the bookcase will be four inches out from the drywall and I'd like this edge of this to go in a half inch into the door opening. So I've cut this piece here three and three quarter inches so by the time I add another three quarter inch to the face I'll have a total of four and a half inches and that will swing in. So as the door swings closed this little corner here, uh, this corner will miss and then this one will just tuck right in and, and uh, sit in there nice. So again, this is only for the single panel outswing doors. Other than that, you you're, don't have to worry about this stuff. So I'm to the point where I've got the, uh, the bump out done on the non-pivot side. I've got my face frame all made up to go on and this is ready to to be attached. Um, I like to attach the face frame before I attach the rear panel just because it's easier to get in there and uh, run the screws up. 
The difference between a full face frame and not a full face frame, obviously that's a full face frame. If I'm not doing a full face frame, when I make up these three shelves, I'll make them up with the faces already attached. And the face will be the same level here as the top of the uh, end panel. And then I'll have something, usually a fluted trim like this, that will lay down over top so that this is sitting proud. So when that's all said and done, if I'm not, if I'm doing a full face frame, this is what the, the front's going to look like. If I'm not doing a full face frame, I'm going to use a, a fluted trim. The fluted trim will sit on top of the other pieces. So that's the difference. If I can, I like to use a full face frame. To, to me, it just seems like it uh, adds a little bit more um, rigidity to the structure to keep it from sagging. So we'll get that attached and then our rear panel and we'll be about done. We're looking at the bottom of the door, and I'm going to build up uh, some the, just the bottom here so I can uh, attach my hardware. So I put glue on the on three of these. The bottom will take three. The uh, top will take two if you use them three quarter. So there's one. different for each door, but um, you're going to mark where your pivot point is. So on this outswing door, I know that it's uh, an inch and a half in and an inch and a sixteenth from the edge. Uh, the inswing doors are back here somewhere and the, uh, the ones that um, are freestanding are somewhere in this area. So with that marked, now I can drill a uh, five eighths inch Hole. I'm going to go about an inch deep. And it will receive uh, this. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, mark where that's at. And then I'm going to router that out so it sits in there flush. case is done.